Welcome to RCR Wireless News, I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here with Omar Flores. He is Global Business Development Manager at 3M, focusing on the tower space. Omar, thanks for coming into the studio. Hello, Martha. We see so much now with more fiber going to the tops of the tower, and I think that that has created some opportunities and challenges for 3M. So I'd like it if you could start off and tell us a little bit about how you're selling into that space. Well, definitely, uh, fiber brings a lot of opportunities to 3M. 3M is, at the end of the day, uh, fiber-based technology. Uh, company, so we bring uh, uh, products that enable the development of fiber networks. We have seen a big transition in the industry, specifically in the tower from coax technologies going into the fiber. And the role of 3M here is to help make fiber installations accessible, uh, to help uh, the industry to make it faster and easier to deploy all these networks. So definitely it's a time for opportunities for 3M, it's a time for deploying new technologies, and it's a good time for us to bring those technologies to the industry. We hear a lot about tower technicians needing to learn how to test fiber, how to make sure fiber is clean, just how to work with fiber. Can you share some of your insights here? Definitely. So uh, the, the transition from coax to, to fiber is, I would say, recently new, probably five years ago, back in 2010, 11, uh, the industry was just talking about bringing the base station, specifically the, specifically the radio, at the top of the tower. So it's quite recent, and a lot of these technicians are very skilled on the previous technology coax. Uh, you may remember that uh, a lot of these installations were made in the field, the connectors, coax connectors were made in the field, and now having this transition into fiber uh, has uh, brought the need to bring new skills into these technicians. These technicians need now to increase the skill set, they need to learn how to manage fiber, and they need to uh, do in fiber installations. And this is where TRIM is helping to increase that skill set, not only by, by bringing new technologies and new products, but by making and designing this product to be easy for uh, easy application in the, in the industry. Also, we provide training, not only on, on the use of our products, but also in the uh, fiber uh, technology overall for the industry. So definitely it's a challenge for, for the industry to learn about fiber. It's a challenge for 3M to help the industry understand more about fiber. So I can say uh, five years, uh, through these five years that the industry is still in transition and the industry is still willing and, and uh, hung, hunger for, for, for more learning in, in fiber. So give us some examples. You, you brought one with you. Mm -hmm. Well, this product uh, is called the, the Easy Cleaver. Uh, this, this is a, a cleaver, uh, like any traditional cleaver, allows you to do uh, a, a fiber installation, allows you to prepare the fiber for a fiber connectivity. Uh, and more than a cleaver, I'm calling this an enabler. This is an enabler of developing and deploying fiber networks. One of the major constraints of fiber is uh, deploying these fiber technologies in the field. So this tool is not only easy to use, but is quite accessible in terms of cost to the point where we give for free this tool when, it, uh, when, when people get uh, a, a box of connectors. So at the end of the day, uh, helping in this transition from coax to fiber, one of the missing points was the actual technology uh, to make that infra infrastructure possible. So having a tool like this that is quite inexpensive, is e very easy to use, allows the technician to do that uh, transition and allows the technician to do that installation quite easily. So uh, tools and uh, the right technology, the right connector were two missing points or were a gap, if you will, over the past five years. So we believe that this will really help the industry to enable those future 5G technologies, to enable that massive Internet of Things that the uh, industry is already talking. And finally, indeed, at the end of the day, enables that capacity that is needed today, but also is needed in the near future uh, by 2020. You may recall that uh, as of today, uh, there is a, a, a number of probably 2 billion devices, and it's expected smart devices, probably 6 million uh, overall devices and industry by 2020 is expecting to have somewhere between 30 to 50 billion somewhere there. So different people 
calls different numbers. But at the end of the day, to enable all that number of billions of devices, you need to have capacity. And in order to have that capacity, you need to have a fiber reliable, a, a reliable fiber network. And devices like this one uh, makes that transition accessible and enables that transition. So just a small device like this, we believe, will have a big impact in, in the networks. So is this where you see 3M playing going forward is primarily with, uh, with hardware that um, facilitates the installation process? Yes, definitely. 3M is, a, is a, at the end of the day, 3M is a, a material science company. Mm -hmm. So most of our products are based on, 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 on these technologies, material science. So we either bring materials that allows better performance, like pin mitigation with our weatherproofing technology, or uh, devices like these that allows you to do fiber connectivity. And in the near future, we'll, we'll, we will also work in on technologies that allows you to do uh, a faster and easier SAT acquisition. So definitely 3M plays in the infrastructure uh, segment, and, and we, will, we will continue playing in, in the infrastructure segment through our material science uh, play. What are you doing with site acquisition? Well, site acquisition is one of the main challenges of the industry. It's yeah. quite interesting. Uh, over the past four years, through this transition that I mentioned, uh, RF performance was an issue. Sense and monitoring was another issue. Uh, PIM has been an issue. But it's quite interesting. On our last research, site acquisition last year became the number one challenge on the industry, which is funny because it's not a technical challenge itself, yeah. it's, it's, it's more a deployment challenge, and site acquisition became the, the, the number one. So we did some research and we learned that uh, there, there has been opposition from the industry to, sorry, from, from the uh, people in general to allow this deployment. Uh, this concept is called NIMBY not in my backyard, that means that we all want to have those five bars in our cell phone, but nobody wants to have those antennas and those radios next to us for different reasons. One of the main reasons, at least in the US, is aesthetics, right? So there is a big opposition from municipalities, from communities, and, and uh, that is somehow restricting or constraining the deployment of, of, of the networks. So we learn about this uh, challenge and uh, very soon we'll be giving a, a, a good news about technologies on how to hide this infrastructure. So that, that's coming, that's a big surprise that, that Trium uh, will announce very soon. Okay, we'll look for that. So, so <coughs> you find yourself probably cooperating with a lot of different companies throughout the wireless ecosystem, but also competing with some of them, right? Definitely, so uh, this industry, uh, uh, we believe that uh, to be successful need, needs to be uh, sustainable and, and sustainable. And in order to get there, you need to have, obviously, uh, a financial attractiveness. It, has, it needs to have a positive green environmental, environmental impact and also needs to have a social impact. And when it comes to the financial standpoint of view or the economical standpoint of view, we believe that the only way to provide service to all these 30 to 50 billion devices is through cooperation among companies. So quite often we see ourselves uh, working with uh, different companies. Sometimes we see some of these companies uh, competing uh, uh, against us. And I think that's the nature of this, this, this industry, of this business. The name is cooperation at the end of the day. Yeah. So towers is your area, but if we could just talk a little bit before we finish about some of the other fiber areas where 3M plays. Uh, I think metro fiber is very interesting to a lot of our audience right now because of small cells. Definitely. Well, at the end of the day, we, we have seen not only in the tower, we, but we have seen everywhere uh, getting the fiber deeper and deeper, deeper in the networks. Uh, I mentioned just a, a few minutes ago that uh, fiber is going all the way to the radio and there's just a small fraction of coax cable. Well, that same uh, uh, process is happening uh, in fiber to the home. That same process is happening in uh, the back hole, and that same process is happening everywhere. So fiber is getting deeper and deeper, and uh, we, we are trying to help leveraging our technologies to, to make that happen. When it comes to back hole, uh, there has been always a constraint in terms of, of back hole. Most of the networks, 2G and even 3G networks, were deployed using the so-called T1s and E1s, which is the twisted copper pair. And obviously, uh, with the deployment of, five, of 4G, 
uh, the industry realized that uh, it, it was a constraint. So there has been a big, big uh, transition to provide fiber to all these different base stations everywhere. And, and we will see that continue happening all over the world, especially in the U.S. U.S. is a fiber-rich uh, country. There is a lot of fiber. So getting fiber from that fiber ring into the back hole will continue to be an area of opportunity for the whole industry. Okay, all right, great. And what about in-building fiber? We hear a lot about passive opticals, saving power in-building. That's another area for 3M, right? That's an er another area of 3M, and we see similar characteristics, similar needs, and similar challenges in a different shape, if you will, as with the tower and as with fiber to the home. At the end of the day, the, the fiber case is bringing additional capacity. At the end of the day, the coax uh, technology has some restrictions in terms of distance. Uh, coax technologies in, in building wireless so far are uh, constrained to 100 meters. Some companies are claiming 200 meters, but that's it. So in order to bring that quality of service, in order to bring that capacity to every single point inside of the building, we believe that the solution is, is fiber. Uh, and uh, by the way, you solve two issues. One is bringing the right uh, capacity to the right point. But by doing that with fiber, you're also reducing uh, the, the power consumption. You, 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 you obviously know that uh, all these coax uh, networks, there is a big loss from the starting point to the end, sometimes even more than 50% of loss. So that makes the, the, uh, the design of a network quite complex inside of the buildings, and there is a lot of loss. And for that reason, you, you need to have all these fat, big coax cables. So we believe that going to fiber <coughs> will reduce the amount of energy used, so that will bring this green concept again, the environmental uh, uh, sustainable concept that we have been talking about, but also will allow to, to bring uh, uh, service into, into, into the building overall. Uh, there's going to be a transition going from coax to fiber. At this point, what we are seeing is, a hybrid, is hybrid systems. Uh, is a, a, a mix of uh, fiber going into the radio and then from the radio going into coax. Uh, those radios usually are five watts. That's what we see now. We believe that in the near future, and by near future, I mean next year, in two years, the whole network can be potentially fi fiber-based. Um, there has been some companies announcing some products that will enable that. Uh, we're seeing now fiber-fed radios and integrated antenna radios, fiber-fed, no coax at all, and then uh, radios with uh, 25 to 100 milliwatts of, of, of uh, power usage. So just as we saw in the tower, in building wireless, we are facing a big transition. I think we're in the middle of that transition. And, uh, and at the end of the day, the name of the game is, is capacity through sustainability. So. Sounds good. All right, Omar Flores, 3M, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much, Marta.